Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out, and in the video today, NASA and their real-life space DJs. Nobody is really quite sure how the tradition of waking up NASA astronauts with pieces of music got started. NASA itself only notes that wake-up calls are a long-standing NASA tradition. However, archivist and historian Colin Fries, who has painstakingly tracked down every example of a song or clip played by NASA in such a scenario going all the way back to 1965, is fairly confident that the earliest example of such a wake-up call occurred during the 1965 Gemini 6 mission on December the 16th, likely as a joke. During this mission, astronauts Walter Shearer and Tom Stafford were woken up by a recording of singer Jack Jones and Hello Dolly. According to Fry's earlier missions in the Gemini program and the manned missions of the earlier still Mercury program were too short to require the need for wake-up calls. The musical wake-up call quickly became a regular occurrence intended as a way of bolstering morale while allowing astronauts a few minutes to wake up slowly before having to respond to ground control. Over time, this became one of NASA's most beloved traditions, with the role of picking the songs given to the mission's capsule commander, Capcom. Yes, just to be clear, not only do these people get to put Capcom for NASA on their resume, but they can also add in Space DJ. The songs chosen over the years have been wildly eclectic, ranging from classical music from composers like Bach and Beethoven to the latest hits of Metallica and the Beastie Boys. These songs are largely chosen in accordance with the tastes of the astronauts aboard the craft. Craft. Towards this end, before a mission, the individual tasked with handling communication with those in orbit, the aforementioned Capcom, will often ask family and loved ones of the astronauts if there's a particular piece of music said individual might like to hear while in space. Thanks to the extensive records that NASA keeps, we not only know every song played for astronauts in orbit since 1965, we also have the astronauts' responses to some of the more unusual choices played. For example, for a 2008 mission aboard the space shuttle Atlantis, officially designated STS-123, Capcom played a brief snippet of the theme song from the presumably epic film Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, as well as part of the Blue Oyster Cult song Godzilla for Japanese astronaut Takao Doi, signing off by saying, Good morning, Endeavor. Doi sang Ohio Gosimasu from Mission Control here in Houston. Take on today like a monster. An amused Doi responded that he was happy to hear Godzilla before himself signing off to get to work. According to Fryzer's extensive archives, Godzilla's iconic theme song is apparently a popular choice for Japanese astronauts, as are the themes from other well-known films like Star Wars, Star Trek, and Rocky. Predictably, songs with a space theme are also popular choices, with David Bowie's Space Odyssey and Elton John's Rocketman being noted as some of the most commonly played. Given the inevitably varied tastes of astronauts taking part in missions, the choice of songs has caused some good-natured friction between them. A notable example is the song Wild Blue Yonder, better known simply as the Air Force song, chosen as many astronauts come from the Air Force. This has led to complaints from members of the Navy taking part in missions when it's played multiple times. On another occasion, the aforementioned Steve Robinson found himself with something of a dilemma on his hands when a superior insisted he play Wild Blue Yonder, while the wife of one of the astronauts asked him to play a Barry Manilow song, a little traveling music. So, when he was stuck between this rock and a hard place, what was his solution? He said, I played them back to back. I thought they would cancel each other out. The only complaints were from the Navy guys on the crew, but I'm not sure if they were complaining about the Air Force song or Barry Manilow. In addition to songs, NASA has at various points played private messages recorded by the astronauts' loved ones, including the occasional singing of Happy Birthday when applicable. They've also occasionally played messages from celebrities. Notable examples of the latter include personalized greetings from William Shatner, Paul McCartney, and Elton John, as well as a skit performed by Jim Henson involving Miss Piggy, and even a song sung by Darth Vader set to backing music from the Beatles. Perhaps best of all was the crew of Atlantis on November 25, 1991, being woken to none other than Patrick Stewart stating, with Star Trek The Next Generation theme music playing in the background, Space. The final frontier. This is the voyage of the Space Shuttle Atlantis, its 10-day mission to explore new methods of remote sensing and observation of the planet Earth, to seek out new data on radiation in space, and a new understanding of the effects of microgravity on the human body, to boldly go where 255 men and women have gone before. 
Hello Fred, Tom, Story, Jim, Tom, and especially Mario, this is Patrick Stewart, choosing not to outrank you as Captain Jean-Luc Picard, saying that we are confident of a productive and successful mission. Make it so. Finally, while it's noted that ultimate control over the playlist in space is down to the discretion of Capcom alone, it's generally agreed not to wake up astronauts with too startling music. That said, some Capcoms have chosen to ignore this for their own amusement, such as Commander Chris Hadfield once waking up the crew with an extra loud U2 rendition of the Mission Impossible theme song. In another somewhat jarring instance, in 2001, the crew of Mission STS-98 was woken to perhaps the most annoying song in the history of music, Who Let the Dogs Out? And in fact, Rolling Stone named it the third most annoying song in history behind My Humps by the Black Eyed Peas and Mother of God. The Macarena by Lost Rio. So why was Who Let the Dogs Out chosen for the crew of STS-98? Well, Kenneth Cockrell, the pilot of the mission, was previously a member of mission STS-69 in 1995, with the crew of that mission nicknamed the Dog Crew 2. As for today, with the retirement of the Space Shuttle program, this wake-up call tradition has partly been left in the dustbin of history, though occasionally is still observed on the International Space Station and presumably will be re stated as a regular activity once NASA begins sending people to space themselves again. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that subscribe button below this video. We put out brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also, let me thank our patrons on Patreon. If you're interested in supporting this show and helping us keep making these daily videos, please do consider supporting us on Patreon. We've got some great perks lined up for people who do. So please check that out at patreon.com forward slash today I found out or check the link in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching.